All right, good evening. Good to see everyone. Thank you for coming back tonight. And, uh, remember, um, to pray this week then for our missionary, uh, Brother Philip DePano, and young man to the Philippines. I don't know if I mentioned this morning or not, but it looks like he got engaged. And um, so, uh, happy for him. And um, uh, really uh, was impressed with that young man. So, um, we'll back him up in prayer this week, if you would. And then uh, Wednesday night will be prayer meeting, and we'll pray for him then. And um, back to Bible study on Wednesday, or probably back to Bible study, First, Second Thessalonians. Okay. <laughs> uh, that's okay, I got like 30 points here. I always got something, yeah. <laughs> okay, all right, sounds good. So, and then we're having, you're going to have the ladies' fellowship on Wednesday? The uh, ladies' fellowship meeting also on Wednesday. Okay, that sounds good. So, anything else then, or how's Todd doing? Any news on him, or is he bit just busy, or? Yeah. So. Yeah. All over the place. Yeah. Okay, so. so sounds good. So, Gary, you still awake? Uh, yeah. Okay. <laughs> Wow, you made it through the third song tonight. You're yeah. getting pretty good. Yep. So, all right. First Corinthians chapter six tonight, and uh, this began with um, having fellowship um, with our Savior, and uh, having fellowship with the saints, having fellowship with the Scriptures, and then having fellowship with the Spirit. And um, I mean, don't you agree? It's pretty neat that the Lord lives inside of us. And uh, and I don't know how to really explain that. Um, it is a mystery, um, but our bodies are the temple of the Holy Ghost. So, so that's what I'd like to take a look at tonight. And uh, just looking at the work of the Holy Spirit in all of our lives, it's amazing. Uh, he has a, a vital part in the part of salvation, and then also um, a part in our uh, service uh, for the Lord. And not only that, He's just our daily comforter. Um, it's a blessing to have Him here with us. Um, he said, Fear thou not, I am with thee. Uh, he said, I'll never leave thee nor forsake thee. And he sealed himself inside of us until the day of redemption. And um, I know he says every so often, he moans and groans and says, Wait, I can't wait to get out of this body and get in that new body. <laughs> and now that makes two of us. And um, so the thought is to be familiar with the Spirit of God that lives inside of you and, and uh, have companionship, have friendship. Um, he's a person. Uh, he has a mind. Uh, he knows and understands things. He reveals uh, the deep things of God unto us, his spirit to our spirit. And um, then not only that, he has uh, emotions. He talks about being grieved, about being quenched, and um, uh, giving us joy. And then also he has a will and, um, uh, for us to obey, to obey his will. And uh, you know, the Lord's with you. He's a very present help in the time of trouble. So don't ever forget that. Uh, the Lord is, is always right there with you. And um, that's a blessing. <clears throat> First Corinthians chapter 6. And I'm sure he's done a whole lot more for us than we could ever imagine. Um, and we'll find out when we get to heaven all. Uh, being good to us and looking after us and protecting us and uh, being merciful to us. and. Uh, so many other things. But, but if you would, uh, tonight, um, if we can, let's uh, look at verse 19, 1 Corinthians chapter 6 and verse 19. Now it says, What? Uh, know you not that your body is the temple of the Holy Ghost, which is in you, which you have of God, and you're not your own? Look at verse 20. For you are bought with a price, therefore... Glorify God in your body and in your spirit, uh, which are God's. And uh, I guess um, the Corinthians didn't realize that, you know, um, you know, that their body is a temple of God and uh, that God was with them. And not only that, God was in them. And, uh, you know, when you get saved, um, you're the Lord's uh, possession. He purchased you and I. Uh, he is our owner. The Lord is our owner, and um, I mean, what better you know person to have um, for your owner than the Lord? I told you this morning, uh, some of you were here, some of you were not, 
But my favorite illustration, or one of them anyways, is about a little boy who built a boat and, uh, and he got the boat all built and took it down the stream, was playing with it and the tide came in and uh, the boat went down the stream and he lost the boat and he was heartbroken and sick over it. And uh, his parents took him to town one weekend and he was just going, you know, little kids wouldn't go to the toy store. And, um, you know, as the boys would we'd go, go to, the, uh, when my kids were small, we'd go to Wally World, Missy would shop, and I'd take the kids over to the, the toy section. We always would have fun. But, it was only, you know, it's natural for boys to play, you know, cops and robbers and uh, cowboys and Indians and play with guns and arrows. That's natural. And then Caitlin would play with, with the baby girls and the baby dolls. And then when Missy was done, we'd put the toys back and leave. <laughs> and uh, now the only problem is when you get older, your, your toys get a little bit more expensive. You know, I, I got a witness. Uh, I got no witness on that. All right. <laughs> and uh, so anyways, a little boy goes to the toy store, uh, finds, uh, he looks in through the toy store, and he finds his boat. And he tells the, you know, the owner of the store, says, hey, that's my boat, that's my boat, that's my boat. And the guy says, no, that's my boat. If you want that boat, that boat's 1995. So the boy goes back and raises the money and does various uh, jobs and things and comes back and then buys that boat and uh, takes that boat home and says, um, I made you and I bought you. And he put his name on it. And uh, that's what the Lord did for us. He made us. He's our creator. And then he died on a cross um, and purchased our redemption, and now he is our owner. Um, he made us, he bought us. Ain't that a blessing? And uh, that who, that's who uh, the Lord is tonight. I want to take a look at a, a few things tonight about um, knowing or how to know um, that the Lord is with us. If you would, look at Genesis 28. Genesis 28. And this kind of is dealing with, uh, with Jacob. I've been wanting to do something on Jacob or something on Abraham or on Daniel, but the Lord hasn't given me the liberty to do that yet, but um, I'd like to do that um, one of these days. And there's a lot of good uh, information back there. Um, but if you would look at uh, Genesis 28 and verse 10. And Jacob, and uh, this is after, um, and Jacob's living up to his name. The word Jacob means uh, deceiver, or a supplanter, or, or twixter. Um, that, that's who Jacob is. Jacob was um, kind of my mama's boy. He was like, um, a, you know, in the kitchen and, and doing those things uh, with his mom. And Esau was a man of the field. He was a, he was a hunter. And uh, we know that Jacob. Um, uh, I guess, uh, took uh, Esau's birthright and his blessing. And, um, but he took something that God was already going to give to him. And uh, anyways, uh, after this, um, you know, he, Esau says, when I, when I get hold of you, I'm going to kill you. And uh, so they send uh, Jacob off, and, um, and then they just say, you know, they tell Jacob then to, uh, to go to, you know, to only marry, I guess, within the Jewish nation or within their family. And they gave him... Uh, specific instructions on who to marry and who not to marry. And, uh, but Esau heard that, and Esau purposely then uh, took wives, multiple wives, uh, from the land of Canaan. But Jacob's gone, he's on the run, and probably uh, afraid of his life and not sure what the future holds. He's uncertain, he might be scared, and all alone and in the dark. But you know what? At times like that in life is when the Lord shows up. You know, and, uh, and think... God, that us New Testament Christians, that we're never alone. Because the Lord is always with you. And, uh, and you have his word, you have his promises, you have the Holy Spirit. Um, what time I am afraid, I will trust in thee. And, uh, and we should have some, a bunch of scriptures memorized in our heart and our mind. Especially in areas of that we know that we're weak in. But we should have some, some verses that we can call to memory to help us. You see what I'm saying? Don't, don't, you know, when you're scared or you're afraid or you're nervous or, you know, things don't go right or, or something, you should have some backup verses and, and start quoting those verses. <clears throat> Look at verse 10. And Jacob went out from Beersheba and went toward Haran and he lightened upon a certain place and he tarried there all night because the sun was set and he took all the stones of that place and put them for his pillows and lay down in that place to sleep. I mean, aren't you glad you don't have to sleep outside? 
Aren't you glad you have, we, we have a nice cozy place to stay? And you know, I got one of those my pillows. Uh, we got our comfy comforters, and um, but you know that's home for us. Don't you? Aren't you? Thank God we have shelter, and not only that, we got a nice place to live. Um, you know, I mean, so our journey here on earth. Won't you agree? God's been good to us. Um, I, you know, I mean, uh, you know, I mean, I like to go camping. My wife really doesn't, but you know, I don't mind being outside. You know, maybe a night or two, and you know, sleep in a tent or something like that. And I like to hear the the you know the crickets, and uh, I like to see the stars. You know, but I wouldn't want to be out there during a snowstorm or when it's raining. Uh, you, know, uh, you know, my outdoorsman is, uh, is conditional <laughs> on good weather. Uh, I'm a, we're, a, we're a Holiday Inn type people. And I like to go hike in and, 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 and those type of things. But I'm glad I don't have to live outside. You know, um, I'm glad to be inside. Um, you know, so thank God for these things. I, I like running water. I like um, when you turn one side on, it's cold. I like to turn on the other side, and it's hot. I like to get my toothpaste and squeeze it, and the toothpaste comes out. Uh, I'm uh, um, trying to have uh, Brother Mike Roberts come in here in the next month or two and, and preach to us. And um, I love his ministry and dealing with those orphans or something. And obviously, Mike knows a whole lot more about it than I do. But he, he said about the Vietnamese... Uh, they bathe, uh, they drink, and they cook with all the same water. We got it pretty good, don't we? You know, and, uh, and I'm glad we don't have to boil our water before we drink it. Uh, and I like, you know, um, believe it or not, I think the Walmart bottle water is the best. I think it's my favorite, but I mean, look at all the convenience. You know how many gallons of water we go through in just one day? We go through a lot. Uh, aren't you, uh, I mean, I know we're spoiled, but don't you appreciate the, the conveniences of life? Um, I do. And he dreamed, uh-oh, here's the Lord working, and behold, a ladder set up upon the earth, and the top of it reached to heaven, and behold, the angels of God were ascending and descending on it. Wow, what's that? Look at verse 13, and behold, the Lord stood above it and said, I am the Lord, the God of Abraham, thy father, and the God of Isaac, the land wherein thou liest, to thee will I give it, and to thy seed. You know, I mean, what a blessing this is to Jacob. He thinks, oh, I blew it, man. I, I stole Esau's birthright, and I stole his blessing. I, I pretended to be Esau, and I wasn't. I mean, you know, he, he's probably going to think he's going to end up like Cain being a vagabond. You know, and I um, mean, he's like, oh, man, I'm all alone, and uh, where's God at? And in the middle of his uh, his you know, sleep, and the Lord shows up in a dream and lets him know that the Lord confirms, makes, makes a confirmation. And, um, I mean, it, it, the, the Lord is inside of us, and every so often he'll just tap you on the shoulder and let you know, hey, I'm with you. And it seems like times in your life when you're down or you're out or you're discouraged or you're distressed or you're in doubt or darkness or you, you're just maybe just a mess, that's when the Lord shows up and says, hey, I'm here with you. And, and that's a blessing. The, the Lord's inside of us. Your body is his temple. In the Old Testament, the Lord had a temple for his people. They come and worship. They pray. They met together. They assemble. They do what we do, but they did it in the Old Testament sense. But in the New Testament, the Lord has a people for his temple. We don't have to go to a building anymore. We have God right now here with us. Our worships are from our heart. We don't have to meet him in a building. He's in our bodies. And no matter where we're at in life or whatever, what hand life deals with us, he's here with us and he's still good in his promises. He made, they've been made. Um, and the Lord stood above it. You know, I think that ladder coming down there, that ladder, in my opinion, is a picture of Jesus Christ. That ladder is a picture of Jesus Christ. That ladder come from heaven and it came down to the earth. Um, salvation begins at the top and comes down. That ladder came down, and when you put the ladder on, you put it down inside the dirt. That ladder is inside the dirt. Jesus Christ is inside of me. I'm dirt. And it ascends from, from here to heaven. Ain't that cool? You get that? Behold, the Lord stood above it and said, he's, you know, he's at the top of the, you know, I mean, I don't know, this kind of looks like uh, Jack and a Beanstalk. And the guy up at the talk is talking to the guy 
down there, and behold, the, the Lord stood above and said, I am the Lord, the God of Abraham, thy father, the God of Isaac, the land where thou liest, to thee will I give to thy seed. He's just passing down the promises now. I mean, Jacob is like, what has just happened? I'm scared. I, I don't even know what, what's going on. And the Lord's confirming these promises. And thy seed shall be as the dust of the earth, and thou shalt spread abroad to the west and the east and to the north and the south, and in thee and in thy seed shall all the families of the earth be blessed. He's just reconfirming the promises made unto the fathers. Look at verse 15. And behold, I am with thee. Mm. Wow. I don't have to be afraid of Esau. I have God. I don't care about my future. I have the Lord. Behold, I am with thee. I will keep thee in all places whither thou goest. And boy, Jacob was all over the place. And I will bring thee again to this land. For I will not leave thee until I've done all that which I've spoken to thee. You know what, aren't you glad? I mean, one of the, the, the job of the Holy Spirit, I mentioned this a couple weeks ago, that he's our, our earnest um, and we can be confident of this very thing. He that has begun a good work in you will perform it until the day of Jesus Christ. You know what time God, the Holy Spirit's done with you, you're going to be conformed to the image of Jesus Christ. Amen. Don't matter where you go, don't matter where you've been, doesn't matter what's happening in your life. Listen, he promised that and he's going to finish what he started. And you have the proof of that promise living inside of you. I mean, I mean, I mean you, you all think about what it's going to be like the day we all end up like Jesus Christ? Have a body? I mean, we're going we're gonna to be like Superman. Have a glorified spiritual body. How cool is that? This is a real thing, man. I mean, don't you want to like, I probably shouldn't say this, but don't you want to drink the Kool-Aid tonight to speed up the process? I want to see what it's like. I'm, I'm tired of waiting. I'm 50-something years old, and half my life has been waiting, wait, 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 wait. I'm, I'm tired of waiting. I want it now. I want to see what it's like. Just give me a weekend tour. I mean, that's going to feel so good to, to get out of this body and to get into that body. And Man. But aren't you glad he'll never leave you nor forsake you? He'll never turn his back on you. He'll never abandon you. He'll never, he can never say, oh, you know, that, that's what the charismatics say. They'll know they'll quote, say, oh, well, I never knew you. He can't say that about you and I. Um, we have this seal. Um, the Lord knoweth them that are his. The foundation of the Lord standeth sure. I am the Lord's and he is mine. He's inside of me. You know, um, just hang in there. Look at verse 16. And Jacob awaked out of his sleep. I told you, uh, God deals, um, you know, and this was, you know, before they had a completed Bible, of course. And I'm not saying that, you know, God deals with us with his word. But I'm telling you, in the Bible, God dealt with people, you know, when they were sleeping. He gave them dreams. And the Lord showed up. And this is going to sound a little weird, and you may or may not believe it. You're welcome to either way. But when I first got saved, um, I was downstairs laying on my bed. And, and my heart was the Lord, and I was seeking the Lord. And I wanted to do right. I wanted to be in church. I didn't know where to go, what to do. I had no guidance or no direction. And I tell you what, I was on my bed, and I, I fell asleep, and I had a dream. And I believe that the Lord gave me a dream. You can, you know, and I don't remember what it was. It was about where to go to church, or it was something along the lines of that. You know, so, um, you know, I mean, here I am. You might say that's weird, and I, if you told me that, I probably wouldn't believe you, but I believe it was from the Lord. I didn't know any better. I was seeking the Lord. I was looking for His help, His guidance, and His direction, and I, I, and I didn't know what to do or where to go, and I had a dream that was that the answer to, to what I was seeking or looking for, the answer to my guidance or to my direction, was in that dream. Say that's weird. You can say what you want, but... Um, you know, I believe that came from the Lord. Now, now that I am, you know, obviously grown and stuff, I don't trust anything but this. But I'm just saying, I think the Lord used that in my life. Maybe he did, maybe it was the devil, I don't know. But I don't know why the devil wanted me to go to a Baptist church. You see what I'm saying? Got right with God, and God called me to preach and had plans for me. 
And, um, you know, I mean, right now over in those Muslim countries with all this chaos going on, and, and they know that, they know that, uh, that uh, Mohammed is not real. The whole thing is a fake and a cover. It's religion. It leaves you empty. There's nothing to it. Don't tell me there's not Muslims over in those Muslim countries saying, is this all there is? Looking up at the stars and saying, who is the real God? I'm telling you, I believe this with all my heart to be true. If they're looking for the Lord, the Lord will communicate them and he'll, he'll use dreams. He did in the Bible. You know, I told you the other night, um, uh, Peter was waiting for lunch and uh, he went upstairs to pray and, and as they were cooking... Um, he fell into a trance, and the Lord brought down the vision there, the parachute with the, the, with the animals. I mean, and God used a trance with Peter. There's people in the Bible that God gave them a vision while they were awake. Um, if the Lord wants to communicate with somebody, bless God, he can do what he wants. He's God. But now that we have a completed Bible, we have the Holy Spirit inside of us, this is what we have. But you know what? You come through this and God will give you a dream or a vision or, or God will give you something through this word. This is your guidance. This is your direction. This is your compass. This lets you know which way to go. Um, you know, follow the road map. This is a road map for you. Now, this is our owner's manual. This is important for us in our daily personal life. And uh, Jacob awaked out of his sleep and said, Surely the Lord is in this place, and I knew it not. Um, that's like the, the Corinthians. Know you not that your body is a temple of the Holy Ghost? God is in this place, and I knew it not. Do you get what I'm saying? God is in this place. He's in me. And the Corinthians knew it not like Jacob. And he was afraid and said, how dreadful is this place? This is none other but the house of God. This is the gate of heaven. I mean, at his worst time, uh, at the lowest place of his life, he runs into God. And Jacob rose up early in the morning and took the stone that he had put for his pillows and set it up for a pillar and poured oil upon it, upon the top of it. I mean, we should look back at our life and have some spiritual memorials, places where the Lord met with us and did something special for us in our life. Don't you agree? We should look back and, and, and have some memorial stones of things that, you know, I tell you what, um, um, there's, you know, it wasn't not too long ago, I, you know, I, I heard a sermon on, and it was, you know, I was at work and um, listening to Christian radio and this sermon came on. And the guy wasn't even a hard, you know, the Lord's funny how he does things. The guy wasn't even a hardcore King James guy. You know, but he was a good preacher and, um, you know, and I was listening to it and I was getting a blessing from it. And it was a good sermon. And then right in the middle of that thing, I think, uh-oh. This sermon's for me. You ever had that happen? Yep. I'm like, the, the Lord, I'm at work and I'm like, the Lord's meeting with me. Uh, and, and he came to and he did something for me and uh, <laughs> it was a blessing. I told you a few years back ago, um, um, you know, when the pieces first came down from Toledo and they had to go to that job or something, and they invited us over for dinner, you know, and they want to, you know, get in with the in crowd and be with the assistant pastor or whatever it was. And uh, so they, they invited us over, we're waiting for dinner, and uh, she said, oh, well, we're waiting for dinner, I'll, I'll turn the TV on. They didn't know us very well. They would have they known me well, they would have put the golf channel on. <laughs> but they put the, the religious station on, and you can't believe who was on. Joel Olstein. And then, and like I'm like I was so down and discouraged that week and I thought, oh man, I like I you know, I'm losing my faith and uh, I was just struggling at the time. No one knew except for me and God. And the Lord is so funny how he does things. Joel Olstein preached on discouragement. And here I am sitting, the guys eat my lunch. I'm like, I'm the most discouraged person on the face of the earth. I'm trying to hide it so no one knows, but the Lord spoke to me. And I'm like, I felt the Lord just took that whole weight off of me and, and fixed things. Um, the Lord's funny, folks. You know, I told you before, there was a guy I used to go and I'd go up to the Bible conference at Toledo. And, I, and, and at first, I'm like, he's my least favorite preacher. And I'm like, oh, no, don't let him preach tonight. I mean, let the other guys preach. I don't want to hear him preach. I don't like that guy. You know, and every time that guy get up and preached, guess who the sermon was for? The Lord's funny, man. 
And um, so, you know what? You should know that the Lord's in your place. He's in your heart. He's in your body. He's in your life. And he'll do, do various things. I mean, you got those angels there uh, going up and down on the ladder. I'm not sure exactly what that means, but um, I was thinking this. Well, I tell you what, maybe that's a good picture of prayer. The angel's running, running up the ladder, taking your prayer request up. When he gets an answer, the angel comes, comes down the ladder and, and brings it to you. You might not think that's so funny, but Daniel waited 30 days for, I think, Michael to bring an answer to him. And he got a little delayed. He said, yeah, man, he got, I, got, I got stuck in traffic, and it was a traffic jam. You won't believe it. And we sat there, and we sat there, and we sat there, and, and then this happened, and that happened. I mean, you know, sometimes doesn't it seem like, hey, when's the angel coming back down the ladder with my answer? And let me say this to you tonight. Um, I know about the Lord's heart. I know what he likes. We, the Lord likes to meet your need. The Lord likes to be needed. You know, we're living in the Laodicean church period, and one of the things, and I'm not giving us a hard time, this is the time which we live in, but about that church period, it says, you know, that they have need of nothing. The Lord feels left out. He's on the outside. You know, the one who's living inside sometimes feels like he's on the outside of your life, and he wants to be when you're knocking on the door. Let, him, let me back in. Let me say this about the Lord. I've learned this just a little bit. I mean, the Lord... Um, wants to be needed. You know, Lord, you know, I, I mean, if you ever have any problems or any issues, you need anything, I'd recommend going to him first. You know, and, uh, the, you know, the Lord likes to supply our need. He likes to be the one. He's our provider um, uh, for our things in our life and, and the source of our supply. And the Lord wants to be like you and I. He wants to be wanted. He wants to be to feel like he's needed. Every mom and dad likes, likes that feeling. Um, you know, I'm here. Why don't you come talk to me? And uh, verse 18, And Jacob rose up early in the morning, took the stones that he put for his pillows. He said, Man, uh, man, my back's killing me. My head hurts. Those, are, those pillows weren't so soft. And he set up for a pillar, and he poured oil upon it, and he called the name of that place Bethel. But the name of that city was called Luz at the first now look at how funny Jacob is. And Jacob vowed a vow saying, If God be with me and will keep me in this way, he's just repeating what the Lord said. You ever do that in prayer? You know, when you're praying to the Lord and talking to him, quote his word back to him. Oh, I think he likes that. I think it was Lester Roloff or something. One of these guys, when they didn't have TVs, these old time preachers were for fanatics. And especially about the word. One of the guys used to on his knees, read three chapters a day and look up to heaven and read God's word back to him. You say that's kind of weird, but maybe the Lord thought that was pretty special. You know, now maybe do something quirky or something weird every so often in your relationships, man. Don't let it just be mum drum hum drum. Um, and Jacob vowed a vow, saying, "If God be with me and keep me in this way that I go, and will give me bread to eat and raiment to put on." So that I come again to my father's house in peace. I mean, he just solved all of the guy's problems for him. He doesn't have to worry about Esau or where he's going. The Lord's got him. Then watch this. Yeah, you know, if God wants to be my God, then I guess I'll let him. You can be my God. <laughs> Isn't that it sound like Jacob? Then shall the Lord be my God. And this stone which I've set up for a pillar shall be God's house. And all that thou shalt give me, I will surely give thee a tenth unto thee. <laughs> all right, so uh, so back to 1 Corinthians tonight. And um, our time is uh, going by fast, but I'm going to show you then tonight about our bodies being the temple of the Holy Ghost. And uh, he's our owner. And not only that, he's, um, he has occupancy um, in, in our lives um, he's an occupant. He lives inside with uh, you and I. And, um, I mean, listen, you know, you heard old-time preachers preach this and say, you know, would you do anything different if Jesus would come and live in your house for a week? You know, would you put the magazine away? Or, or would you do this? Or would you do that? You know, would you change anything if Jesus would come and, come and live and stay with you? But Jesus has come to stay. And he lives inside of, of you and I. 
And um, our bodies is his temple. And how do I know? And you can see his work and his proof in, in our lives by some of the things he does. Um, and I don't have time to look at all the scriptures on this tonight, but um, he promises to guide you and lead you into all truth. And when you get into that word there and you open that word up, it's the, it's the Holy Spirit that will guide you and lead you. I look at Psalm 119. Psalm 119. I can hopefully find this verse I'm thinking of. Psalm 119. And the Holy Spirit's the author of the Bible, so he knows the Bible pretty good. And he can guide you and lead you through it. And he is your teacher. Look at Psalm 119. Um, let me see if I can find this verse here real quick. I really like it. Um, oh man. I had it underlined here. Um, oh, yeah, look at uh, Psalm 119, 133. Psalm 119 and 133. Order my steps in thy word. And when you get into this thing, it just, it's just amazing how God leads you uh, through it and um, takes you to the places that you need to be. And so you see things that you need to see and hear things that you need to hear and, um, and, uh, and guide you and directs your life through that. Order my steps in thy word. So, um, so it's important to be in the word. I mean, how is he going to order your steps if you're not in it? I told you when I first got saved, I mean, I, you know, the Lord saved my soul but I always say the Bible saved my life. The Bible saved my life. Every day, I didn't read the Bible necessarily out of, uh, you know, out of want. I read it out of need. I needed to read the Bible. You say, why? Because it saved my life. You have no idea what the mess that the Lord brought me out. It's amazing how he brought me out of that. It's just absolutely amazing. Um... You know, here's Jacob just out in the middle of nowhere. I mean, just, you know, thinking, well, I, well, I just blew it, man. <laughs> Jacob, Esau's going to kill me. I stole his blessing. Just made out a mess. God doesn't want nothing to do with me. And here the Lord shows up. And the Lord's, you know, the Lord's not done with you. The Lord's not done with you. Order my steps in thy word. Watch this. And let not any iniquity have dominion over me. Look at John 14. John 14, and these are all good promises that uh, the Lord gave the night he went back to heaven on uh, the work of the Holy Spirit. And they're all just familiar stuff. Uh, let me see. Where Look at John 16, 13. John 16, 13. <clears throat> Howbeit, when he, the, watch this, the spirit of truth is come, he will guide you into all truth. He shall not speak of himself, but whatsoever he shall hear, that shall he speak, and he will show you things to come. Ain't that cool? I'm telling you, with all this uh, crazy stuff going on in the day which we live in, I don't know if I mentioned this this morning or not, but one way you can... Uh, you know, and, uh, and this all began with COVID, folks, and it's the spirit of Antichrist taking over and prevailing over the world, bringing the whole world together as one. You know, now, you know, and, um, and you know, we believe in, uh, you know, uh, study to show thyself approved unto God, rightly dividing, um, uh, study to show thyself approved unto God, a workman that needed not be ashamed, rightly, rightly dividing, dividing the word of truth. The Bible has divisions in it. And, um, you know, different people at different times. That's not real complicated. There's a natural division in your Bible with the Old Testament and the New Testament. But we're living in a time where they're doing away with any division or any differences. We see it with race. We see it with gender. Um, we see it with religion. You know, and they're trying to act like there's no, there's that, you know, there's no divisions or difference among humanity. How can you be that insane? And the, the, the goal is that the whole world is going to come together as one, and one guy is going to rule over the whole thing. That's the Antichrist. 
That's the mark of the day which we live in. It's a false unity, folks. And, uh, and, and that's what's happening. Um, you know, and closer we get, and hotter this, and bigger this mess gets, more the truth will be hated. More this book is going to be hated. And, um, and we already see it now with um, them wanting to control uh, the information that's out there and censor stuff or label you or, um, or, you know, cancel culture. You know, if they don't like what you're saying, they'll just get rid of you. We see that, we see that this eventually is what they're after. This is what they want to shut up. They don't like this book. This book tells you exactly what the future holds. And, um, and who holds the future? Um, crazy stuff going on. Um, the, the job of the Holy Spirit is um, he'll guide you and lead you into all truth. And I don't care uh, what the, if, it's a, if it's a scriptural subject, uh, whether it's tongues or healing or uh, baptism or any of the things that we deal with again, in the age which we live in, you can know it, the absolute truth of what that is if you want it. And... Um, you know, look at verse, uh, look at um, John uh, 15, 26. So the, the Spirit, of, how do I know uh, that the Lord's um, with me? He, he'll guide you and lead you in all truth. God wants you to know the truth. And you shall know the truth, and the truth will make you free. Uh, there's a verse there in um, 1 Timothy or 2 Timothy. I don't remember exactly where it's at, but it says that God will have all men to be saved and Come to the knowledge of the truth. God does, doesn't want you just to be saved. He wants you to know the truth. He put it in a book. And the whole trinity is called the truth. God the Father is called the truth. God the Son, Jesus said, I am the truth. And the spirit of truth. And this is the word of truth. The Holy Spirit works within this book right here. And he'll open your eyes and reveal these things to you. And, uh, and the truth will make you free. Um, you know, listen, you, when you read your Bible, you should be sensitive to when the, the Holy Spirit, that, that verse will like vibrate or the, the Lord, uh, you'll feel something inside. And you'll know when you read across something and the Lord is, 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 is that verse is popping out because God's trying to get your attention or speak to you with that, right? I mean, I, I don't remember what it was now, but when I got called to preach, um, you know, and I was told this, I said, well, you know, what verse did God use? I don't remember, but God gave me a verse that, you know, that I used. It, didn't, it obviously doesn't say, Don Ayers, you're called to preach. Because there's not that in there. But there's a verse that God used to let me know that he wanted me to preach. <clears throat> and, uh, you know, and that's a good thing. If you've if you got a decision to be made or guidance or direction or we don't know which way to go, and, you know, you can always ask the Lord um, to give you a verse on it. So something you to hang your hat. I called a preacher friend up. I told you this before, and I was asking some advice, and I didn't know what to do, and um, say, hey, what do you think about this? And, um, he's, and he wouldn't. He said, I, I'm not going to put any thoughts in your head. I'm not going to give you an answer. He says, you've got to get your answer from the Lord. He said, because if something happens and you go through a hard time, if I tell you something, then you'll doubt that. But if you get your answer from the Lord and let the Lord confirm something in your life, and you have that Bible verse, so when you go through a hard time or a difficult time or a time of doubt, you can cling to that verse. Ain't that a blessing? God's, God's, hey, Jacob, by the way, I just want to let you know I'm with you. I'm going to be with you all the way. I'm going to be with you to the end. You mean I don't got to be afraid of Esau? No. Nope. Um, hey, um, you got a wife in the future for me? You know how by Jacob's thinking. <laughs> um, you know, Jacob was very materialistic, but, but before it was all over with, um, Jacob learned to live by faith. <laughs> I love the story of Jacob wrestling with that angel, and that angel's the angel of the Lord. And they're, and, um, and they're wrestling all night, and that's a good picture of a prayer, or um, us wrestling with the Lord in prayer, trying to, trying to get something uh, accomplished in our life, or an answer, get the Lord to do something. And he's wrestling with the Lord until the sun comes up, and the sun comes up, and the angel says, well, hey, the sun's coming up, i got to go. And Jacob says, you're not going nowhere. You're not leaving me um, until you bless me. That just was his mindset, and God knew that. And, um, and then the angel said, well, what's your name? 
He says, my name. You know, he's God. He's like, Adam. You remember, Adam, where art thou? God knew where Adam was. God just wanted Adam to know where he was at. What's your name? My name's Jacob. He said, oh, yeah? He said, hmm, I remember a few chapters ago you said you was Esau. And he come clean with, with the Lord, and the Lord says, all right, you want a blessing? It's going to cost you. And did something to his, uh, shrunk up the, the sinew in his leg, and he, and he walked with a, a limp after that. But he was never the same. You know, when the Lord touches your life, you'll never be the same. Your walk will be different. And uh, that's what we need in our life. We need, we need the Lord to come down and, and touch us and, um, and change us. And we need his blessing in our life, folks. And um, that's pretty cool stuff. But Jacob, before it's all said and done, um, he learned to live by faith. Uh, look at verse 26. So the, uh, the Holy Spirit will guide you and lead you in all truth. Uh, verse 26. Um, then he'll, he testifies of Jesus Christ. But when the Comforter is come, whom I will send unto you from the Father... Even the spirit of truth, there we go again, which proceedeth from the Father, he shall testify of me. And our job as a Christian is to be filled with the Spirit. And, uh, and a Spirit-filled Christian will always testify of Jesus Christ. And uh, we, don't, we don't testify of the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit testifies of Jesus Christ. And, uh, when, and throughout the Scriptures... Um, you know, I have a couple things against Paul. Never, you never find him complaining. You find Job complaining. You can find David complaining. Moses complained. But you never can ever, ever find Paul where he ever complained. And uh, he was a spirit-filled Christian. And, um, and he, oh, whenever he mentioned God, he always mentioned the Lord Jesus Christ. The Lord Jesus. The Lord Jesus Christ. And uh, a spirit-filled Christian wants to exalt the name of the, the Lord Jesus Christ. Um, one more, I think, tonight. What do we have? Uh, he's uh, our teacher. Uh, let me see. I think that is, look at back at um, uh, John 14. We're going backwards. That's how I normally roll. <laughs> Three steps forward and two steps backwards. That's my life. Look at John 14 and verse 25. Now, this is the, the, the work of the Holy Spirit in your life. Um, your body is the temple of the Holy Ghost, and uh, he's inside you. Ain't that neat? God, I was looking at you guys tonight when we were singing, and I'm thinking, man, God's in, in all of those people. How, how neat is that? That is cool to me. Look at um, verse 25. I will be done. John 14, verse 25. Just give me five more minutes. <laughs> five more. Are you awake? It's time to wake up, Gary. It's almost over. Uh, that's right. The last five minutes, I've got to go over to sermon because no, they don't see what I see. You're just waking up. <laughs> All right. I'm done. Look at John uh, 14, 25. These things have I spoken unto you, being yet present with you, but the Comforter, which is the Holy Ghost, whom the Father will send in my name, watch this, he shall teach you all things and bring things to your remembrance whatsoever I have told you. Peace I leave with you. My peace I give unto you. Not as the world giveth, give I unto you. Oh, isn't, isn't these wonderful words of life? Are you ready? Let not your heart be troubled, neither let it be afraid. Oh, man, isn't that so refreshing in the day which we live in? And um, listen, I, I, I don't have really nothing new for you tonight, but I know this. Every time I go to the Bible, um, I ask God to open my eyes and teach me. He, it, we all have the same teacher. We all have the same teacher. I mean, I, I, I know I already said this, but the other night when Brother Bravo was here, to me that was just so refreshing. Um, that you know They're like dealing with the same things down in Chile that we're dealing with here. Because we have the same Holy Spirit. We're the same teacher, and we're dealing against the same spirit that's out there. I just thought that was cool. Some of the stuff he was preaching, I'm like, <laughs> this, this is, I'm right with you. And, um, you know, that's just the Lord letting us know that he's with you. God's with you. 
and uh, that's a blessing. And I like what he told Joke about, I'll get you back, I'll be with you till I get you back to this land, don't worry. You know what, God will be with us until he gets us to heaven. And I'm thinking out there, we don't have to worry about having any pillows of stone to lay on. Even if you got to sit on a park bench, man, I guess it's going to be all that bad. Right? You can always go lay down in the forest there with uh, the trees of life and lay up against one of those trees and drink some of that sweet nectar, that sweet tea of heaven, and just relax and take a, that, that, that breath of eternal life. And whew, it's finally over. I'm at home. Back to Bethel. And um, we're going to be together forever. Right now, he's in my temple. He's in my apartment. But one of these days, when it, before it's all said and done, I'm going to move into his temple. And I'm going to be with him and live with him. He better be nice to me now, because I'm going to be with him a long time. <laughs> and I'm good at harassing people, even God. I mean, the Syrophoenician woman got him. I can get him. And, um, but that's a blessing. Uh, the Lord, he's with you. He's inside of you. Your body's his temple. And uh, not only um, is he in our body, but we're in his body, and we're members of his body. And uh, there's just so much neat stuff. So, But hey, I, I'm, I'm stopping early tonight. How do you like that? <laughs> All right, well, thank you so much for being here. And uh, I'm going to be done with this. I got uh, something new I want to start here. Um, Lord willing, I probably will not be here next Sunday night. I'm looking to, to go out of town on my annual golf trip if all works out. That'll be next Sunday night. But... Um, and we'll pick it up um, at a later date. So thank you so much for being here. Uh, I do hope you have a good week. And uh, see you Wednesday. If you would uh, stand to your feet. Glad that Paul could make it here with us tonight. He got off work at 6 this morning. Closes out in prayer, please. That concludes our worship services today. We'd like to thank you so much for tuning in and watching us on live stream. And we personally would like to give you an invite to our church. Uh, if you're out there and uh, you don't have a place that you call home, if you don't have a, uh, a local church to attend, we'd love to have you. And we want to give you a personal invite and come meet us in person. Uh, so thank you once again for watching. And we sure hope you got a blessing from the message that the Lord gave us today. And if there's never been a time in your life where you ask the Lord Jesus Christ to be your personal Savior, we pray that you might take this opportunity after hearing this message and invite the Lord Jesus Christ into your heart and accept Him the best way you know how as your personal Savior so you can know for sure that heaven's your home when you die. So thanks again for tuning in. Um, this is our uh, uh, home Facebook page uh, at Liberty Baptist. And also you can um, see us at libertybaptistada.com.